Thank, thank you for your warm welcome. Yeah, I've, I've lived in a lot of places. It's, I guess there's two reasons for that. Um, probably I can't seem to keep a job. And um, the other reason is there's this thing about taxes. So I figure if I just keep moving, you know, I can avoid one of the life's most inevitable outcomes, which is paying your taxes. But uh, I'm really happy to be in Canada now. It's actually the first time I've been in North America uh, in about 30 years working. Uh, so it's quite a bit of change for me, actually coming back into a Western environment from an Asian environment, but having done a couple of stints in Australia in between got me ready for uh, social democracy and uh, managing in a, uh, in a little bit different environment uh, than it is in Asia. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, but that's really, I don't think, probably the important part about today. It's more about maybe what I think, you know, myself personally, uh, it takes to be successful, uh, maybe above and beyond um, what you're learning, uh, you know, right now as far as your competencies and your technical competencies as far as being hoteliers or being leaders and managers. Um, I guess, you know, for myself, I just had this love for, for food and, and through my family, and that's why I got involved in restaurants at an early age. Uh, and after that, I started out as a dishwasher when I was about 13 years old. I worked my way up to a busboy position in a restaurant, and I just kept on getting jobs in restaurants. I worked my way through college, uh, you know, through that. Uh, I grew up in a Navy family. My dad was in the Navy, so we moved around a lot. I grew up in Hawaii, then we moved back to the United States in Florida. I went to school in Tennessee, because that's where my mama's from, and uh, she's a good Southern girl. And uh, I learned a lot about hospitality actually living in the Southern United States, because Southern hospitality is, is, a, is a very, very unique part of the American culture, which some of you might understand if you've been there before. And uh, in the South, um, you learn a lot about manners and about being polite and those type of things. And that's some of the things and the values I got from my family. Um, as a, somebody going to university in that part of the world, it was the first time I'd lived actually in that part of the world. And I found it quite unique as well because uh, again, that part of the United States is a little different than some of the other places. Uh, if you've been there, I think you can appreciate that. Uh, after I got out of school, uh, I did an internship with Sheraton Hotels. And after that, I decided that I didn't want to be a manager in a hotel anymore because I thought the pay was terrible. I thought the hours were too long, and I figured there had to be an easier way to make money than being a manager. Uh, so I traveled out west, and I went to the Grand Canyon, and I went up to the Tetons, and I was sort of a transient uh, resort worker. As a young man, I figured I'd have a little bit of fun before I got into the serious stuff, and I had a good time for a couple of years. But then I decided I needed to go back to Hawaii. So I went back to Hawaii because I love Hawaii, and that's my passion to go back there. And I was very fortunate enough to work in a couple of hotels, meet some people with Hyatt Hotels, and then I started working for Hyatt Hotels. And that was the beginning of about 17 years with Hyatt. Uh, you know, they were very, very good to me. I learned a lot. I uh, got an opportunity to uh, learn just about everything you can learn in a hotel. Even though I worked in food and beverage most of the time, I also did some marketing. I also did some catering. I got to do some rooms things, you know, and, uh, which I found quite interesting. And uh, very, very fortunate to have some very good mentors in my life that put me on my track to going back overseas. Uh, I was married in Hawaii about, uh, about 21 years ago. And uh, I took my wife and my son. We moved to the Philippines. We lived there for a while. And that started my journey with international hotels. Uh, but I decided at that point I also wanted to immigrate to Australia. And so we became Australians. So I still have my American passport. I keep that in my back pocket. Uh, I use it when I need to cross over the border, but that's really about it. Um, but we became Australians. We lived there for a while, then we moved to Asia. And I spent a considerable amount of time in Asia. And I, in that journey, I joined Shangri-La Hotels. Uh, it was quite a big change for me because working for an international hotel company like Hyatt and working for a small Chinese family company, uh, Shangri-La, uh, is a little bit different. Shangri-La's is their core competency as a hotel group is owner operator. We do manage hotels for owners. Uh, in fact, the Shangri-La in Vancouver is a managed property. Our Shangri-La that's coming up in Toronto is also by the same owners. So we manage those properties for a fee, of course. Uh, but our core competency and our growth of our company is really aimed in Asia and mostly in China. Uh, and my acumen uh, as a hotelier sort of changed a little bit when I went from Hyatt to Shangri-La uh, because my acumen had to become a little bit more business focused uh, because working for a Chinese family company, it's a very, very important part 
of the business is to grow the business and make sure that at the end of the day, because the family owns the business, we have to make some money. But the, the, the thing that I like about Shangri-La is we have a great balance between taking care of the guests, taking care of our employees, and also running a business at the same time. So it's a little bit more of a balanced approach than just collecting a fee from somebody who owns the hotel and then just moving on whenever somebody decides to change the flag, for example. Uh, not that that's not a good way to do business as well. We have a lot of, I'm sure you've had a lot of speakers in here from international uh, hotel chains, but it's just a little bit different of a business model uh, from what we do. And Shangri-La has been very successful at that. We now have 65 hotels. Uh, and in those 65 hotels, we have a very unique culture that we share, and I'll touch upon that a little bit. But maybe to start with a few things to think about, uh, I'll give you a little bit of an agenda, some of the things we'll talk about. And these are what I call key success factors. One is emotional intelligence. Um, it's not really about your IQ as much as it is about your EQ, especially as you move up in management. Uh, we'll talk about emotional connectivity and engagement with your shareholders, employees, guests, and your owners, and a little bit about that, and a little bit about our culture, again, with Shangri-La. Strategic and creative thinking. I think some of you do some courses on strategic uh, management, part of that strategic thinking. Creative thinking as well is also very, very important to be successful in our business and continuous learning and on your journey what you can do to, to keep on learning more and more. So I think that's a very, very important part of, uh, of what we do. I actually took an opportunity at one point to go back to school between Hyatt and Shangri-La to go to Cornell and it was probably uh, one of the best times in my life as far as learning new things. Emotional intelligence. Uh, it's personal competence and social competence. That's the combination. And, you know, personal competence uh, is made up really of self-awareness and self-management. Can I accurately identify my own emotions and tendencies as they happen? And can I manage my emotions and behavior to a positive outcome? Okay, I think it's a very, very important part of what we do every day in a hotel uh, and how we manage our people. Social competence. This is about social awareness and relationship management. Uh, again, our business is about people, and if we can't foster good relationships, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty tough to actually run a hotel. So when we talk about emotional intelligence, it's a given that all of you through your curriculum, okay, and as you go through the business and learning on the job, that your technical competence, okay, it's a given. That's what's expected. Okay, people expect you as a manager to know your job. Okay, but the difference between being a good manager, okay, and being a great manager, or a very good manager, I would say, uh, is your EQ. Okay, it's what you know about people, and it's about your interaction with people. Okay, that's probably the most important thing, because as you move up, your technical knowledge is already there. It's how do you move that forward and how do you do the next part, which we'll talk about a little bit, which is about, oh, look, I'm sorry, I forgot this slide. Uh, this is what Stephen Covey, you all know Stephen Covey? Have you read the, the Eight Habits and Seven Habits and then the Eighth Habit? That's sort of fantastic stuff. But he talks here about, about the fact that in the industrial age, you know, it was a control philosophy, okay? And now the subscription really is more of not control, okay? Uh, but it's really more of empowering and releasing, okay? Surrounding yourself with very competent people and letting them do their jobs rather than trying to control them from what they're doing. 